Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to have a look at the completely unique, very rare Quantum 4 telescope. This is a telescope that was made in the 1970s. The history is that Questar had gone through some uh, changes, reorganization, and uh, several of the people who had originally worked for Questar decided to leave and make a new company. And they started a company called OTI, which is the maker of this telescope. This is a Quantum 4, which is a four inch telescope. Notice that it's half an inch bigger than a Questar. And it's got many of the same distinct characteristics of a Questar. They're uh, very, very close siblings. But does it have the same cachet as a Questar? Does it have the same quality, overall distinction, prestige as a Questar? We'll take a look. We'll examine that in some detail. Take a look at the elegant case for the Quantum 4. Beautiful. Let me give you a closer look at this Quantum 4. First of all, you'll notice that the overall appearance is uh, very, very reminiscent of a Questar. The knobs here are nice, finely knurled knobs. Everything here is of the same kind of quality manufacturer as a Questar. Here's the control box on the back, very similar to a Questar. Fewer knobs. It doesn't have a focuser back here. This is, in fact, where the focuser is located. That's a strange little mechanism that turns the control at right angles. Uh, here's a close-up of that. Let me show you how this internal mechanism works for focusing. This is a Barlow switch, and this is the uh, straight through, so this engages or disengages the star diagonal inside there. Now with this adapter in, you can use a, an inch and a quarter eyepiece or a, a star diagonal or a, a more conveniently a pearl prism, something like that, to look straight through the scope. You can also put a camera on there. So the control box is at least reminiscent of a Questar. Here it has the finder. The philosophy here is different. Instead of a built-in finder, the finder is attached to the side. It's a pretty nice little finder. It's a 6x30 finder. Because this has a lot of friction here, they put in a clutch so that you can push this in, move the thing around in right ascension, or you can use the and this is exactly like a Questar. It's very, very smooth, buttery smooth, very nice, well geared. Same thing applies over here. This has about a 33% obstruction, similar to the Questar. One thing that you'll notice right away is that this has a single fork arm. And that means that you can remove this. Let me show you how that works. You can remove the OTA. And this is a standard quarter inch 20. The scope can be mounted on a, a regular tripod. I now have the Quantum 4 off its fork and I've put an adapter here for this Bogan tripod. This is a, you need a, a pretty good high quality tripod to do this. And the bogan is suitable. Just have to put it on there, snap it in. So now you've got a nice spotter scope. They look a little funny. You want to plug this hole too so that you don't get dust or debris or bugs don't fly in there. So uh, now you've got a really nice powerful spotting scope. If it's a little awkward looking to you, you can with some tripods at least, you can do this. With this tripod you can rotate this around. Makes it a little bit more reasonable looking. You can even then, of course, use this if you want, although you'll have a 
will be a correct image. Uh, the nice thing about this is then you have now convenient access to the finder because you get a lot of focal length with this telescope. So as a spotter, you need a, a finder for the spotter. It's not a bad idea at all. There are two pins here that engage right in there and slots is right. Tighten this down. Now I have the Questar set up next to the Quantum 4 for direct side-by-side -side comparison. One thing that you'll notice right away is how much larger this scope is. It's um, half an inch more aperture, but half an inch more aperture, that ratio turns out that if you cube that ratio, it gets to be about one and a half to two times the scale. So this scope is considerably larger than the cute little Questar. The Questar is a one-hand telescope. Uh, the Quantum 4 is not. It's a two-hand telescope, at least for me. You're not going to be throwing that around with one hand. This one I can hold with one hand and put it on the tripod and so forth. Uh, so that change in scale is kind of dramatic and kind of impressive. Uh, the overall mechanics appearance I think is uh, quite comparable, quite similar. The control box on the two scopes are a little different. Um, there's more to this one, but this is just fine. It works just fine. Also, one thing that the Questar has is a built-in dew shield. This dew shield slides out, in and out, and so forth. My Quantum 4 didn't come with one. As a matter of fact, when they were sold, you had to pay extra. <laughs> well, I built one, I made one, and I didn't match the paint very well, as you can see. But I made one out of a piece of tube, and it slides on there. I can even store it, so it's self-storing. So I can store the dew shield on there. And it works just fine, uh, just as well as the Questar. It's not as pretty as the Questar, I have to admit. That quest, <laughs> these distinctive, oh, oh, these wonderful, elegant, distinguishing characteristics of the quest are just hard, hard to match. Here's another little thing the quest star does not, does do that the quantum four does not do. The quest star will rotate to a certain extent. As a matter of fact, if you take the eyepiece holder, you can rotate. Uh, you can rotate the whole thing completely around. But this gives you a certain amount of freedom. There's going to be an occasion where you get into an awkward position where that little bit of angle is going to make a difference at a funny angle. This one, uh, you can't do that. You're not going to be able to do that with this scope, uh, unfortunately. So this one is a little bit more restrictive in that regard. What about the performance of these two scopes? These two, two scopes have a slight difference in aperture, three and a half inches as compared to four inches. Does that make a difference? Uh, it does a slight difference. Not very much, not as much as you might think. Um, it's only a little bit better, the Quantum 4. Both of these have perfect optics for starters. They're made by the same uh, optical manufacturer. Cumberland Optics makes the optics for the Questar and for the um, for the Quantum 4. So they have the identical optics, perfect, beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful, superb uh, Maksutov optics in, in both scopes. So they're, they're almost identical. Performance is so close as to be um, slightly different in the, slightly better in the Quantum 4. In terms of the price, bang for the buck, you're probably <laughs> probably doing better with a Quantum 4 if you can buy one. They're extremely rare. But by the same token, this scope, probably on the used market, is worth a few hundred dollars less than this scope. And it's got more aperture. Let's set these scopes up on their legs and show you what they look like that way. Back here on the back, this is... Um, not the original. This is a replica I made, but it works in exactly the same way. You have to attach this 
it doesn't matter which two slots you choose here. It's designed so that you can still use the power plug. This is this is where the power plug goes. It goes in just like that. It's just standard AC power. Right in there. Now both scopes are set up for observing. Which one of these scopes is superior? Hmm. I don't know. I think it's pretty much a toss-up. The Quantum 4 clearly has bigger aperture, better performance. It's a little bit better performance. Uh, the price is actually better on the Quantum 4. Prestige is very high with the Quest R. You can't, you can't top that. And it is more portable. So um, there are distinct advantages to both scopes. But on the whole, they're very, very comparable telescopes overall. Now I have the Quantum 4 set up on its little tabletop tripod arrangement. Um, by the way, this is not original. I had to modify some legs from another scope and so forth. But it works the same way. So you can adjust it for a certain number of latitudes. It's fine. It's not bad. But it's limited because you have to have a table or some sort of a surface to be able to use this this mount. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a nice uh, tripod for this? I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the fascinating Quantum 4 telescope from the late 1970s. Thank you for watching.